Charges for a Georgia man facing 1100 years in prison were recently dropped. Deputies arrested Maurice Franklin back in 2019. He was accused of being involved in a drive by shooting where no one got hurt, resulting in 50 various charges. Franklin had no criminal history and cell phone evidence showed he was not in the area of the crime. Still, he ended up behind bars for nearly two years. Many of his charges stem from his alleged ties to the Crips gang. In a statement, the district attorney says the case fell apart when the witness changed her story. Franklin's wife spent two years fighting for her husband's release. I'm Maurice Franklin. They call me HB. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles, California. I was facing three RICO acts. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, Racketeering Influence Corruption, Corrupt Organizations Act. Um, three of those, 34 violent street gang activities, six aggravated assaults, six uh, possession of a firearm to commission of a crime, and two cruelty to children. You know, one day I'm just chilling at a friend crib, Friday, you know, I'll never forget it, just chilling, you know, turning up, smoking a little bit, and everything was fine. That was August 29th, I believe, 2019, and, um, you know, weekend went normal. Went to church on that Sunday, um, and then on Monday, I'm chilling with one of my partners, and all these people just start texting me, and they texted me, uh, news articles and news clips with my face in it saying that I want it for a shooting and I'm thinking they playing you feel what I'm saying so I'm hitting them with the rest stop playing with me and I just ignored and somebody else hit me and somebody else and I'm now I'm starting to wonder how all y'all know each other you feel what I'm saying why y'all playing a prank on me so then um my wife hit me up then my mom's hit me up and when they hit me up I knew it was real my mom was saying she seen me on tv I Googled my name, and I was the first person on Google as wanted in Augusta. It's crazy. So I found out about the shooting through a mutual friend. Um, she basically was like, come here, I got something to show you. And I'm like, huh, what do you got to show me? So I'm not thinking of nothing bad. So she showed me, sat me down, and then she showed me, she was like, yeah, uh, Maurice is on the news. And I'm like, Maurice is on the news for what? And then it's like, yeah, shooting happened. Um, across town and he was there and I was like ain't no way he was there because I know where he be at mostly 95% of the time 5% of the time you know you know they're gonna sneak and do whatever they do but most of the time he tell me where I'm, he's at so when I found out that he was wanted I immediately called him and he was like yeah uh, I think it's a joke and I'm like it's a joke I was like nah it's on the news and he's like I was like call the people just call the people and see what they say. So that's exactly how I found out about the shooting. So um, after I got indicted, I got indicted on all these charges, the 34 gang charges and all of that, three RICO acts. And it's because they tried to link everybody through social media, link the crimes through text messages. So it ended up being 22 people. So that's everybody got everybody else's gang charges depending on how high up or how low down you were in the ranking system, how they ranked it. So at the top, it would be this person. At the top, the person didn't have any violent crimes, so they got him with the three RICO acts, but they gave him all of our gang charges. So I think he had like 187 or 100, whatever the indictment count was, worth the gang charges. You feel what I'm saying? The top, they try to give him everything. That way, if he beat a lot, they going to leak him to something. They basically throwing a noodle at the wall and see which one stick, you feel what I'm saying?
I was immediately upset just because when you have, when it comes to cases and you're innocent, they tell you to gather information to prove you're innocent. And that's exactly what we did prior to him turning himself in. And the thing is the investigator that we even talked to was like, if you're innocent, bring the paperwork that proves that you're innocent. So, you know, thinking that we're gonna give us them this documentation that says where he was at would clear his name and it was just false. And it just became more aggravating and I was just frustrated. And I just had a mix of emotions because I was pregnant at the time. So I was going through a lot at the time of his arrest. The evidence that we did, we found out was we can uh, print off his Google location, everywhere he went, if his location's on LP, where he's at throughout the day, even the roads that he's on. So we printed that off. Uh, we had alibis. Um, pretty much that's concrete evidence that we had that we provided them um, in black and white form in a folder. Uh, all together, my maximum exposure to the Department of Corrections was 1,100 years with 340 years consecutive. And my first plea, they came at me with 40 years, with 20 years confinement and 20 on parole. Then 30 years, 15 on confinement, 15 on parole. Then 10 years, I mean 20 years with 10 on confinement and 10 on parole. My first three uh, pleas that I, you know, I'm not gonna take. But this is the thing, once I seen them go from 340 years to just a 10 year sentence, I knew they didn't have nothing. You feel what I'm saying? Because when we go back to how, how I felt in there, you go back and starting to think of what they got against you. Even though I knew I was innocent, the human mind is gonna adapt to its surrounding. When, after Maurice had turned himself in and he called me on the phone, I asked them what the investigator uh, in investigator asked him and he said, well, he asked me about, am I in a gang? And I was like, well, that's not related to the shooting. I said, what did they say they have? He said, they didn't say they had anything. All they showed me was a whole bunch of pictures of us on vacation and him displaying gang signs. And they said, that's enough for probable cause. Really the probable cause was the girl said she seen them there, but they allowed her to go through all these loopholes through Facebook um, and then go on someone else's page just to say this was him because we are mutual friends with somebody that she knows. She doesn't know him directly because if you got to go on someone else's page on Facebook that you're not friends with to prove that he was there, then you really don't know him. So he could have been anybody light skinned with hair. So yeah, that's, that's basically what we brought to them about all the facts. So a mutual friend of mine told me about the AJC house. Um, he gave my information to an individual, um, Mr. Sharp from the AJC, to run the story. Um, and what the AJC is responsible for is basically doing a investigation on the case. And so they went and talked to the victim. They went and talked to anybody they could talk to regarding this case. And they built the story about his case. Um, for a news article and it was published and so it caused attention and then what I would went to do is I created a petition online for individuals to sign to try to get him released because the police wouldn't give him a bond basically the court wouldn't give him a bond which you know kind of sucks because you're you're going to bond hearing you're letting him know he wasn't there but the prosecutors turned around saying he's a gang member which isn't related to the crime that they're trying to charge him with so we got, I got his story out. I was able to talk to several individuals. I met up with an activist, a civil activist, um, a lady, and she was telling me all the right steps. So that's an individual who actually helped me, guide me through the process. She was like, did you do this? Did you check in with his lawyer? Did you push for this for his lawyer? Did his lawyer file this? And so I was looking at all these terminologies that she was giving me so I can know the definition of them and understand them better. And then what I did was I did my own research. I went and looked up several RICO charges. I went and looked up life of gang members and just, you know, facts that was already published in different articles, different cases. And none of the facts that were ever, any case that, any RICO case that was prosecuted, none of the facts, they had facts. They had wiretaps, they had documentation, they had, they did their job as prosecutors 
what they were supposed to do. But the prosecutors over this case, they were just throwing a whole bunch of people together who had individual charges into one indictment. And it didn't make up any sense. It looked like different Lego pieces connected together that didn't have any sources that was connected. So eventually the case was gonna fall apart, but the whole point was the, pro the prosecutor wanted him or all these gang members just to sit in jail until they plead out because even at the end of the case when they said the case was going to get dropped and she got she didn't get re-elected for office they interviewed her and she said her viewpoint still stands and he still would have been locked up just because he said he's a gay member and they asked her about the evidence of the case she said her office never received it but it was false because the da if the da receives the information then our lawyer is going to receive the information, meaning it's going to be in the discovery. And all this information was already in the discovery. So her saying that to her knowledge that she didn't know about the information was false. And she went on TV and said this on the news. Man, it's so many meanings. Loyalty, just being there for him or being there for an individual, holding him down, um, you know, seeing him through the good and the bad. I just, I just think that it can't always be a, a, a good side. It's always going to be a bad side. So, man, loyalty with everything in this situation, just because, you know, I just feel like every black man needs a strong black woman as a representation for him. Because a lot of men go down and they have these baby mamas or whatever, or girlfriends that don't basically be behind them. They'll, they'll be locked up for 24, 48 hours and they out of there. So, you know, I don't know if it's, a difference between a wife and a husband because I know there's a difference between a wife and a husband and a baby mama and a, and a girlfriend but you have to get to a girlfriend and boyfriend relationship to be a wife and a husband so I just feel like loyalty was everything and I just felt like he needed me in this situation so it was nothing but to be loyal I know um, a lot of people would be like well he did such and such to you and you know he was facing this and da 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 and but Everybody faced demons, everybody faced something, and you know, everybody's not perfect. And I know I'm not perfect in his eyes, and you know, he's not, he, in his eyes, I'm not perfect, but we all have flaws. So I just figured, I just was like, you know, he did this, and I just felt like I needed to be here for him, because if I would have left him in the dark, he still, you know, none of this stuff would have came out. Nothing that I found out would have came out. So I just, you know, even through the tears and you know the letdowns i was still there no matter what and you know a lot of women will be like no nah, i'm not gonna do that because he did this 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 to me but you know it's different when you have kids it's different when they face in so many years and they're innocent no matter what he did or what no matter what we went through that doesn't apply to what he was facing so you know anything can be fixed you know but I just felt like, let me get him out of the situation and we can work on us later. Um, so that was my, basically, that's how I was thinking about the whole situation, so. These laws so messed up, bro. They so messed up. And it's like, in a weird way, they kind of work on a broad level, but the messed up part is since it's political, they're not accurate. So even though they catch it some, so many other people get caught in the net. For instance, in the 80s and the 90s, early thousands growing up, for me in LA, well, I, grew, I was born in 92. So from 92, I say, and I moved in 2010. Bro, the, 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 the murder rates is crazy. You feel what I'm saying? 01, 02, 03, that Snoop Dogg era, that NWA era, niggas was dying. You feel what I'm saying? I think they say in like the 80s and 90s, per 100,000, 20, people or 20 200 people was dying or some shit some crazy shit but when you look at the murder rate now it's down to the hundreds where at before yearly they was in the thousands you feel what i'm saying but just think about all the innocent people who maybe had a gun on their person because of self-defense you feel what i'm saying and they didn't bang or nothing they just lived in the area that was ridden with gangs what the police gonna think of them as Game member, you feel what I'm saying? You wearing a red jersey with a black hat, you feel what I'm saying? In LA, and you got 10 on your car in LA, that's a threat, you feel what I'm saying? You representing something with all them colors on and their number on. What street that's you from Third Street, you feel what I'm saying? 
Well, with you from the Black Panther crew, they, they would try to paint this picture of you. And then you got these law enforcement officers who's not from these areas. So they don't understand the culture. And the ones that is from the area, they crooked because they from the area. You feel what I'm saying? So it's really a lose-lose situation and it's messed up. But like I said, it go back to the point of me making these people making everything political. What kept you faithful? What kept me Bro, look, it's crazy that you asked me that. Um, at first, my innocence kept my faith. At first. Like I said, you know you're innocent, but you're a human still. It's still psychology and biology. So when you put in a situation for so long, you start to react to those situations. So now I'm thinking, man, fuck, they, I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, man, I don't know if they got me. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know if they, I know they don't got me for that, but I don't know what they got me on because I'm still here. So I'm, I gotta be here for a reason. That's how you start thinking. But then the wife, my mom's, my brother, bro, look, man, keep your head up, bro, what you doing? You feel what I'm saying? Get in that Bible. Then that's when you realize control, what I go back to, control is an illusion. You feel what I'm saying? If God wants you in a certain situation for a certain reason, you're gonna be in that situation until you learn what you're supposed to learn in that situation. And for me, it was learning how to love myself, my family, and how to appreciate, you feel what I'm saying? I, you know, I grew up in LA, so some of the things that I brought to Georgia with me I'm not going to say it was bad, but it necessarily wasn't right for my fit with my family. Being out all night, getting even though I was making legal money and doing all my thing, coming home late at night just to pay bills isn't, isn't enough when you a father of four. You feel what I'm saying? Being financially stable is not enough. You feel what I'm saying? But being immature, that's what I thought. So going in jail and realizing that I got a wife that's gonna stick to it. Cause I ain't gonna lie at the first three weeks, four weeks, I'm like, oh, she out here doing whatever. And I know my wife ain't like that, but like I said, this environment would create you like that or, or try to make you create something that's not. But that's where you gotta get back into your love base. Your home, your home team would love that. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of people don't got a support system. Their support system is they sell me. I'm glad that I had the resources because you got to think, bro, uh, it's, it's thousands of me's in jail. People that don't have nothing, nothing, bro. No family, it's just them. They was homeless and on the streets. So it's easy to pinpoint them to any crime that you want, rape, murder, what you think a homeless, just based off the media, a homeless person is the ultimate criminal. He'll rob you, he'll rape you, he'll kill you he would steal from you he would beat you up for no reason they mentally unstable when you go to a place in a big city you got people with phds that's homeless they just down on their luck and most people that's homeless you already know what color you feel what i'm saying and that's just a general statement but i'm saying so it's easier even easier to make black people look criminal look like criminals you feel what i'm saying so it's easy to just pinpoint a crime to a face justice is not finding the person who did the crime it's finding the person who fit the crime to them that's how they rock because now it's just making a jury believe who you is you got to be a registered voter to be a jury in most states you feel what i'm saying we trying to get young black people to vote but that's why you don't see young black people in juries neither you feel what i'm saying so trying to convince a all white jury that you're not a criminal and you got tattoos and dreads when you're not a criminal for real it's just hard to get that perception to people who don't know the culture you feel what i'm saying it's hard to get that perception to 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 a lawyer to the da to the police to the jailers because even they treat you like how you look you feel what i'm saying and and, and so going back to what kept me going First of all, the word of God, Jesus kept me going. Let's just get it out of the way. Uh, he taught me how to react in love. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and say I was. it was all peaches and cream in jail, but for the most part, I learned how to handle stressful situations in love and in humility and, 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 and just diffusing the situation, you feel what I'm saying? 
And, and another thing, bro, um, it's good to have, it's good to have people, just homies that been through the situation before. It make everything easy. You feel what I'm saying? Having a, having a brother that had been locked up for a little bit, they understood a little bit more. Having homies that went through the situation, they was able to talk me through it. Um, my beautiful wife was holding me down. She was writing me letters. She was putting money on my books, giving me, you know, whatever I needed. You feel what I'm saying? And a lot of women don't do that. A lot of women go off and just, you know, lead a, lead a man. And that's a big stigma with black women right now. You got a lot of black men that feel like black women ain't loyal or whatever. Nah, I'm here to tell you now, my wife is loyal. My wife is 100% down. She was holding me down. When I caught her, if she wasn't home, she was at my mama house. If she was out, she will put me on the phone with all the homies she was out with. You no, know, I ain't got to worry about her. I didn't have to worry about her. And that's a big stress factor. And a, a, a burden that was taken off of me that made the load a little bit easier knowing that the person I love is still out there loving me, going hard for me. She was the person that got uh, the AJC, uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution, I think that's what it's called, but the AJC to take my story on. But it was just cool. Like I had a mom that just looked out for me and covered me financially, and made sure I had the wisdom and reminded me who I am and God. And then even in jail, you, you still, want to have those people and hang around those people who are like-minded who want to go home because some people know that they're not going home so they turn into the animals that the white man wants you to be you got to hang around people and do your time with people who want you to go home who want to go home themselves who will talk you off of the bs that the white man try to put you on you feel what i'm saying they put you in these stressful situations and it, it, and, and it really, they use it to break you. It's a tactic to break you. You feel what I'm saying? But knowing your foundation and knowing who you are, God, and who you are as a human, knowing your limits, knowing your weaknesses and your strengths, when you ain't got no time, well, excuse me, when you got all the time to just think about those things, that's what keep you on the right track. You feel what I'm saying? My wife was one of those major factors that kept reminding me, bro, don't plea out. You ain't going there guilty, don't come out guilty. You feel what I'm saying? My wife was one of those major deciding factors of, I'd rather get that time defending my innocence than saying I'm not guilty, you feel what I'm saying? My wife is a big factor that used to just calm me down. You feel what I'm saying? Just a stressful situation. Let me talk to the kids, play all the music I want. You feel what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, love is, is what got me through. You feel what I'm saying? Love.